And then you need to go to the mykw.com to update that one, and that'll update your uh, and then, profile. And judge it the same way. We go to mykw.kw.com yeah. okay. and go to your profile.
Because when you show up and you work, the results show up. Okay? How did you do? I was going to end two. And yeah, I did only four and zero. Eight. You said I'm four. I'm sorry. Oh, I, did that, I did that too. Four so far. I did that too. Four so far. Four, four so far. Four so far. Zero. So far and zero. <laughs> so 20 and two and four and zero. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. I would like to introduce my admin assistant, Mrs. Evelyn Martinez. Hello. Hello. Martinez. Hi. 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 Welcome. Welcome. We work hard and we have fun around here. Right. Carry on, Ms. Kimberly. Thank you so much. Kim Smith, can you hear us and see the FMLS screen? I can hear you. All right, let's get started. <laughs> necessarily have to uh, go with through with me step by step because I'm going to go kind of quicker than, than you could probably get through. So you go hover over products and you click on the remind. And then you're going first. So if you're this is your first listing, I would suggest printing out or sending the remind input form because that lists every single thing that you're going to have to input for the listing. So first of all, you'll kind of know what you need ahead of time. And two, your client can help you fill it out if needed. So to get to that form, you have to go to docs here. Do you allow or block knowing your location? It don't matter. Okay. So I'm sorry. We're you go to socks. Socks. Yeah. Where Which is where I can see where she's going. Uh, okay. Yeah, she can find that on my screen. Okay. They're right here. Okay. Two dots. Keep on dots. Just stay right there. And not everybody oh, uses right. this form. But I think it's very helpful, and I think it's helpful to sit down with your client and fill it out together, and they can even sign off on it. That way, if something is wrong in FMLS, you go back and you say, well, here's the information you gave me and signed off on. So that also protects you. So you have to create a transaction. Listing, remind form, or you can just put the address. And then next. These forms are under the FMLS forms. Dual entry form. So dual meaning you're go, it's going to go Georgia FMLS and FMLS. Um, I have a question. Sure. So, um, so you can have FMLS slash RE. That's it. Which address did you use? Did you just oh. make up an address? I just, well, you don't, I didn't, we, we don't, don't have, have to one. put in an address. Oh, okay. just, you just have to name the transaction or something. Oh, just name the transaction. Yeah. And once you go in here once, if you just want to download them all to your computer, that way you don't have to create a transaction every single time. So if you name this the uh, list script import form? Listing yeah. Input yeah, I just named mine Remind Forms. Okay. So there's several different forms. So there's commercial, land, Residential, attached, and detached. Be very careful that you don't fill out an attached or a detached if it's not attached. So we get the form, we just click it, and you can click all of them if you want to download them to a file on your computer. I don't have those. Oh, you have to click on the thing up there. You have to click on. Kimberly, how do you download? I'll show you in just a second. Sorry. Thank you. I missed that part. We were going too fast. When did you get the dual okay. entry forms? Yeah, that's what I missed. The F okay, let's go back. Because I, I know how to do this. Was All right, so you're in FMLS. You go to Remind. You click on that Docs mm -hmm. tab. And then you create a transaction. Right. So 
the listing, yep. and you're just going to name it whatever you want, and then hit net, FMLS slash RE, I'm sorry, dual entry form. So if you want to download them, you can check them all, or you can just grab one. So we're just going to grab the detached, because that's the most used, the residential detached form. And then you're going to hit next. At the bottom, the so second to the last. And then you do the residential Where's the section? Scroll down. Residential detached Oh, I see one you can download it from here. Well, you got to go next. Right. Second to the last one, yep. check mark it, hit next, and that's going to take you into the transaction. So you'll notice up here at the top left, my transactions, you'll find all of the transactions you create. Okay. Or you can just go by this one every single time, or you can just check mark it and hit the download button here, the top right. Hey, Marie, have a question. Oh, no, I got it. Go ahead. Top right, or you can click the little three little dots, and you can download from there as well. And just save it to your computer and just use that one every single time. But you also have the option if you maybe your clients out of state, you can send them this through Remind, and they can uh, fill it out just like a contract. I'm sorry, I get lost. Again, um, after the button, next button, it shows me on there, um, under my documents, the document. But uh, how can I get that one? The download is to the top right. You see right, right here. here. Does that look to you? Oh, okay, I got it. Yes, yes thank you. you. So, going to you. Okay. so if we have an actual address, is some of the information on this form going to be pre-populated? They've said that if you, for example, if I email this to my client, they fill it out, that in the future that will populate into the listing information. When that's going to happen or if, who knows. All right. So we, we have to fill this out first before we send it to them, right? Either some agents don't even use this, period. They'll just get all the information from the tax records and fill out what they know. Well, right. mm -hmm. I think it's better to sit down with your client and fill it out together. Because okay. the first half you can fill out is just like tax record information. But the second half is going to be like details about their master bedroom, uh, all the details about their house that you might not know of. Kimberly, I have a question. Um, if you use Remind, can you populate from tax records or is that not yeah, possible? Not this okay. This is what it looks like. So you can just fill out all the information. It's like very long, like 16 pages, I believe. But if there's ever all the information you're going to need for your listing, especially if you're this is your first one, you want to use this so you'll know you have all the correct information that you're going to need. So are we good on the form? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go back to Remind. To the dashboard and to start the listing. So there was your docs where we got that document. <coughs> Under that, add edit. How do you get back to the dashboard? Um, I, I crashed. Show me on top. No, I went back to the mine. Or just go 
go back to FMLS homepage and get reminded. Oh, uh, I think I can. And then what app do you get? How can you go back to the homepage? What do you want? Dashboard? Uh, add, add, oh, add, 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 add,
Okay. All right, so here is where you list the address. Enter your personal if you want to. Now this isn't working. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. And normally it'll pop up. So if it doesn't pop up, try doing it without like circle or street, just do like the street name. A lot of time it's abbreviated with weird. And then next. Through everything populates on the address except for the search area. Um, area numbers are going away in FMLS, um, so I don't know how it's going to look here um, in the next couple of weeks. You might it might still be a required field. I'm not sure. Um, <clears throat> the best way I find an area number is to search a property. But I don't know how rem is Georgia MLS going away. I know FMLS is. Then it's, uh, oh. And I noticed that it, it it populates the listing agent for FMLS, but for the list agent on Georgia MLS, you've got to put it in. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. okay. Good point. Okay. I think that's the next page. So, uh, if you do have to input an area number, you can search either the subdivision, find another property that's either listed or closed in that same area or on that street, and you'll find the area numbers in matrix. area 
number, you'll find it right here. And then most of the time, Georgia MLS will populate. I don't know where these come from. I don't. I've never seen these until Remind came out. The Have you seen that event? No. Okay. But but most of the time, it populates. Yes. Now, if you're doing a fake one, can you continue to do the next, or should you not? It don't matter. You're not going to press live, so okay. You don't have to put anything if you don't want to. So anything with a red asterisk, you have to put something, whether it be a zero. Other, none, it has to have something there. So it populated that for you, right? Yes. yes. But I have seen every now and then it will not, and I just chose one because I didn't know where you got it from. This is a Georgia MLS, because you'll see this is FMLS. Georgia MLS and FMLS have different features. Most are similar, are the same, but there's others that are a little bit different. So you can put in a bogus one as long as it's filled in. Yeah, I have been. <laughs> What about the tax ID? That'll populate. Okay. As long as that address pops up, it's going to populate almost a lot of this information. Okay. The net for FMLS, your name will populate if you have a someone, if you and another agent are listing this together, you can put their name here. But Georgia MLS does not, so you have to just type in your name. else will populate for you and then the list contract date I just put the day it's going live oh is the date that it's going to be live or the date that they sign the contract I think it's the sign but I always put today's date uh -huh. okay and then expiration date that's when your contract expires and next so if you notice up here I didn't put an expiration date so it's still showing up red. So if it's red, that means you're missing something. And you can always go back and update. Then confirm the address again. Then it all populates for you and then confirm. Hmm? My confirm button is not. Do you probably need to shrink your image? Like zoom out or you know I mean? always save as incomplete and if you'll remind me when we're done I'll show you where to find the incomplete. So from here you're going to choose your schools. I'm just again I'm just hitting stuff and then the school bus route. If you don't know if the school comes by there just leave it blank. Again this would be something your client would help you with but if they don't know just leave it blank. Middle school, high school, and you can start you know what it is you can type start typing it and it'll pop up so you don't have to scroll through and then next now this is very important list price so if you get this wrong you have to call FMLS because if you change it just in remind and someone goes to that history they're going to see that original list price that you put. Yeah. So let's say you accidentally did it for two hundred thousand and you have to go back and put it for three or two fifty. They're gonna that's gonna show up in the history of the listing. So the, if you did get this wrong, you have to call FMLS, you have to send them the listing agreement and that's the only way they'll take it down and change it for you. Which is always double check the price. So this is so Kimberly, I have a question about that. If you um, have a listing agreement and then the price is still to be determined, 
uh, if you put in an amount and save it as incomplete, can you go back in and edit that price or no? Yes, you can. Or I would just leave it blank just to be safe. If you, if it's, can you hit the next button? It, yes. or Okay, gotcha. You can always go backwards and forward. Thank you. I'm just saying once you submit it, that's gotcha. when you can't go back and change it without it showing in the histories unless you contact MLS. Thank you. What was your question? So this is um, all happens before you've made it go live. Yes. Before you make it go live, you can do what you like and keep going. But once you click that live button, it's in and yeah. I wanted to show you that. Can I confirm? Is there something that I'm doing wrong in here? Is that why it's not confirming? I tried both button on here and it's obviously the right spot. I have this on So put in a price. I'm just gonna leave it blank. The net buyer compensation. That's what you and your client agree to pay the buyer's agent. So if you agree to six percent, the buyer's agent usually gets three of that. So you don't put that six. The total you're get, putting in what that buyer is gonna get if you close. Normally three. I hate to ask you this, but um, I'm going to have to write down everything from here on out since I get the confirm button is not working. That's fine. Could you just tell me real quick, and I'll just write it down right after you press confirm. You just confirm the address, right, and then the schools. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Okay. And then we're on the second page after you've already done the schools. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. And then buyer compensation type, it would be 3% unless they're getting the flat rate, which normally that's only for rentals. Dual variable compensation. So that means if you are going to, if you bring the, you got a listing and you have a buyer and you are going to decrease your commission if you bring that buyer, you have to mark yes. Because if you go into multiple offers, the co-op agents need to know that information that you're going to decrease. That one, that you, if you have a buyer, you're going to decrease your commission. That makes sense. If you have a, a buyer yeah. on your own listing, yes, so and that. you have agreed with your client that if you bring the buyer, you'll decrease the commission to whatever. Other agents need to know that because if there's multiple offers, they need to know that you're going to decrease your commission so they can be part of the bidding war, whatever. But they could be the same, exact same contract, same price, same due diligence. But if they are going to decrease their commission, obviously they're going to go to your agent, which is kind of unethical. If you're not going to decrease, then you would just hit no. I usually just mark no. <laughs> Occupant type, owner, tenant, or vacant. Listing agreement. Does everybody know what exclusive agency and exclusive right to sell means? Mm -hmm. okay. um, I know exclusive agency and exclusive right to sell would be the sort of. Exclusive agency means that if the owner finds a buyer, you don't get paid. Exclusive right to sell means no matter who finds the buyer, you get paid. Okay. You always want to try to get an exclusive right to sell. Special listing conditions such as a foreclosure, real estate, if it's your own property you're selling, you would mark that, short sell. Now, uh, I'm sorry, 
like um, my investment property? Should I put it in their own property? Which if it's an option, own? yes. Like this, this one doesn't say investment property, but Georgia okay. MLS does. Investment investor owned. Are you saying your personal property? Yes. Yes, it's my. Then you would put real estate on. It's, it's, but it's not my personal, it's my investment property. I would still put, you still have to disclose it's yours. Mm -hmm. Is that going to Clemens? Yes. I would put it in private, it in private as well. As well. Mm -hmm. You always have to disclose if you own the property mm -hmm. or if you're related to the seller. So I did this, bang down. More conditions, estate loans. Um, Georgia MLS has a possible financing. So if you're only accepting certain types of loans, you can mark that here. You don't have to, but it's not a required. Date of possession, negotiable, three to seven days or at closing. And I don't know what these are. These are Georgia MLS features. So just leave them blank. What you, would you put for date of possession? Obviously, if, it's her, if, if the client's decided, you would know that ahead of time, I guess, is my question. Pretty much, okay. yeah. Fine. And if you way. don't know, just put negotiable or other. Okay. All right, so internet. So allow internet display, yes. That's going to allow it to go out to other, your realtor.com, things like that. Allow address, obviously yes. And then comments, I usually put no, because um, you don't want people on random sites making bad comments about the listing. Uh, Insta view tour, that's an app. People can download to view property, so I would put yes, that is allowed to go there. AVM is kind of like a Zestimate. It's going to show what the algorithms believe this property, so I would put no as well. Again, that's like his estimate. Share to public sites, yes. And then broker will provide photos. Unless it's a new construction and you don't have photos or photos desired, not desired by the seller. If you have a URL link, a lot of photographers will uh, include a URL to like a slideshow or a video of the property, you can add that here. And then showing instructions, that's how you want to let the buyer's agent know how to schedule appointments for your listing. Almost every time it's going to be you showing time, and I'll kind of guide you through showing time in just a minute. But if there are pets on premises, uh, see remarks, no sign, all kinds of different options. So again, that's going to be different for every listing. And that was another slide. Uh, showing show instructions. instructions. Lock box type, more than likely, it's always going to be Supra. That's the big blue box that you use. And then showing contact name, always put your name here. Never put your client's information in here. Mm -hmm. And then this one's kind of confusing. So seller broker slash agent present offers. Mm -hmm. The way you read that, it sounds like, yes, the seller's agent would, or this, uh, would present the offer, but the way it's listed in FMLS is it says buyer broker presents offer to seller, meaning that the buyer brokerage would present their offer directly to your seller. So this is always no. It just the way they word it here, it sounds like you would say yes, but always put no here. And availability to receive offers. There's some kind of condition or no condition. And next, here's where you put your public remarks for FMLS, and then you can just copy and paste those into Georgia MLS remarks. So if you notice, FMLS only allows 576 characters. So if you have more than that, you have to put the additional FMLS under the additional public remarks. But George MLS allows 4,000, so you don't have to mess with that. And 
then private remarks for FMLS, and then private remarks for Georgia MLS. Again, just copy and paste. And directions. And then, again, Georgia MLS direction. Then you hit next. And this is where you would upload your photos. So it's literally save it to your desktop and you just either drag it in or click on here. Say you have like 30 photos, you can hit control A and it'll select them all and it'll upload them all at the same time. Control A. Or just drag them all in in the order you want. Or you can invite your photographer their photographer's email and they can upload it for you. I've never used this feature, but they just upload it for you. Yes. Then you'll hit next. And don't wait for the photos to upload because sometimes it takes a while. You'll just see this little spinning circle. Just go ahead and move forward and then go back and make sure they're uploaded. So tax that's more than likely going to populate from your uh, property uh, realist tag. If it don't, you can pull the tax records from realist and get that information here. This section is a require field. I always put zero, but it has to do with like, it's an old feature that they used, uh, appraisers used to use um, to identify land parcels and flat pages, things like that. Which one does that? Sorry. The section GMD oh, okay. is not on the tax records. I don't really know where you would find that information, so I'll always hit zero. Okay. Master Associate fee, you're going to get that information from your client or from the uh, community association disclosure that your client fills out, not you. What those fees include. Um, if there's not an HOA, just put zero and then none. And then association, yes or no. And then association fee. And then the annual association fee. Calculate as a monthly or an annual, but Georgia MLS is always annual, so I would just always do annual for both. Well, I'm sorry, you could put monthly and then this would be a monthly or annually. But Georgia MLS says annual, so just because you put monthly here, this has to be annual. And the HOA contact that should, again should be on your community association disclosure. If they don't know it, then you just have to leave it blank. And then assumable that would be if the client's going to assume the seller's mortgage, which is always no, pretty much. Do complicated that would be HOA dues that haven't been paid. So you want to verify with your HOA that nothing outstanding. Home warranty, I always put no. Um, it's still negotiable. They used to have a negotiable uh, feature in here and then they took it away. But why would you put yes to agree something if they don't ask for it? So just always put no. And then next. Again, all of this, your bill, tax ID, life, um, lot is normally not on the tax record, it's always put zero, sometimes it is. Square footage, again, you get all this from the tax records. Um, sometimes what an appraiser or the owner gives you does not match the tax records because tax records and county records sometimes don't match. So if it's still, you can change that just because it's 3,000, you can change that to 4,000 if the appraiser or your owner says it, and then change where you got that information from. But if it populates and that's correct, you're just going to hit public records. Square footage, Georgia MLS, and then above grade finish area. These are not required, but if you want to include what's 
what's finished on the uh, main level and then what's finished uh, basement or unfinished. You can put those square footages there. But again, it's not required. Acres, put the N on your tax records. Lot dimension, I don't know anybody that knows the lot dimension unless you get, it's not an appraiser, but the guy that goes out and rolls the little wheel. Yes, yeah, surveyor. Unless you have a surveyor, you're not gonna know those dimensions. So just put zero. Mm -hmm. And then plat book, page, land lot, almost all of this information you can get from tax records. If you don't know it, you can always put zero. But if you don't have a copy of the deed, then you want to at least look these up so the buyer's agent will know that information. Subdivision, subdivision name. Land lease, that's for some reason they're leasing the land. That's what you usually always know. Uh, for sale, obviously, not for rent. District, I don't think that's on the tax records. I could be wrong. But if you don't know it again, it's okay to put zero if you don't know it. Property condition, that's usually going to be resale, unless it's a new construction or if it's just recently updated, remodeled, or if it's a fixer upper. Or to be built. And then ownership is normally always going to be fee simple unless it's a condominium. Any questions so far? So again, your client's not going to know a lot of that stuff, so I would suggest bringing your tax record and filling out a lot of that for them. But moving forward, starting here where you get to rooms, this is where you probably need your clients help filling out. And on the form, it's just little bitty check marks that they can just go through, check which ones that apply to their property. And can we all that tax information is on the other mm -hmm. Does everybody know how to pull tax records? So Kimberly, I have a I have a troubleshooting question, and I think someone else there actually had the same um, problem. At the very beginning, when we're putting in the information of uh, the listing price and that, and it asks you to confirm the address. Yes. I'm I'm actually it's not letting me move forward, even though I've gone back to double check all of that. Yeah, I'm not sure if you just need to start over i, I did i tried to start it over and the only thing i can think of is that maybe it's that whole registered because you had to click a couple of things there i did start completely over again um so anyways i didn't know if the if somebody else was having the same problem yeah they are and i don't, okay. I don't know right now what that fix is okay thank you mm -hmm. so this is where you go through upper bedrooms how many bedrooms, upper full, upper half, main, and then lower. If they don't have a basement, you just put zero. And then you literally just go through and you click all the features that pertain to that property. Additional rooms. I'm not going to go through each one, but it's self-explanatory. If it's checked on your form, check it here. If you don't have anything checked, then put other or none. Basement, interior features, appliances that are staying with the property. And again, FMLS or Georgia MLS have different wording. So sometimes it'll populate for you to Georgia MLS and sometimes it won't just because they have it worded differently <coughs> or it's not a feature of Georgia MLS at all. Heating type, cooling, you want to make sure these are correct. Number of fireplaces. Security features, flooring, common walls, that would be for like a condominium or townhome. Spa features, that's going to be if the HOA community is a community feature. Architectural style, body type, stories, foundation. Construction, pool features, that would be the pool on their property, not the community pool. Patio, 
water sources, always make sure the sewer is correct. That's an important one. If people want to know if they're on sewer or septic. Make sure you have that information. They have horses. I mean, there's everything. Parking. Like you said, that's going to be probably all on a form. That yes, it's all on the form. So just little bee check marks that they'll go through and just they'll check or you'll okay. check which one pertains okay. to the property. Can they do it electronically? Mm -hmm. You would have to send it through Remind though. Like view. Always put other on view because they're not very rural, river, ocean, mountain, mm -hmm. marina, lake, golf, city. So. Uh, community feature, that's where you would put the pool, and then other amenities, green, I never have this information, I always just put none, but if your clients mark it, then of course you mark it here. Alright, so this is the very end where you mark it active. So for FMLS, you would either mark coming soon, incomplete, or active. So if you're ready to go live, you're going to mark active. Georgia MLS is a little different. Georgia MLS status is new, not active. I don't know why they do that. And then you have to put that marketing date that you're going live. And then grow, and then you're gonna you can you still have red over here, that means you've missed something, and you can click view errors and it'll take you back and it'll highlight in big red of what's missing. So you just kind of scroll through real quickly, update what's missing, and then so you can click on each one of these tabs and it'll take you there. So I update all that, I'm done, everything's green, so I hit this little review button that will take me back to the submission. Or you can view listing. I'm not going to just view it, but it's going to be there. And then this is where it gets a little bit tricky. This is where I don't like Remind. And I had to screenshot it because I'm not going to submit it. So once you submit, a lot of times you will get this little error. And you most of the time, you can't understand what they're talking about. It's like mumbo jumbo. Request spelled with status code 504. What's code 504? So, what you do is hit publish again. And then, once you hit publish again, this error, you'll have to scroll down, and this error will show up, and you have to confirm. That it's still because it's going to be all green, and you're like, well, nothing's missing, but you have to scroll down and confirm that something's not matching. Then, once you hit confirm, submit again, and it should get through. And you might even have to do that a couple of times. If it's built before 1978, you have to go back to where you have that uh, built the year it was built. And there's a long message making sure you have uh, the lead based paint disclosure filled out. And there's a little bitty Y at the very top. And you have to click that little Y to let you submit it. And then once you publish, it'll automatically go back to your dashboard. It'll take you here and you see that publish, it'll show up here. It'll automatically take you to this page and it'll give you that FMLS number and Georgia MLS number. So you can go in and either manage your showing time or if you want to add documents, um, you actually add documents through Remind. So again, you would have to create a transaction like we did earlier. So once I create, remember how we created the transaction to get to the forms. So you would create a transaction, put in that MLS number. Let me just do another one. 
Next listing, you would input that MLS number and go to next. And once you're inside the transaction, let's say I want to add this to the FMLS listings. Do y'all know what I'm talking about, adding contracts to the listing? So in FMLS, you can add the contracts in the back end so buyers can click on it through FMLS and they can get all your disclosures. So you're not emailing every buyer's agent the disclosures every time they request it. It's automatically in there. So let's say these are our disclosures. You just check mark it and you click on the MLS visibility. The MLS and then you'll share it with all MLS agents. And I have instructions for this, so when y'all get to this point, I can always email you instructions. Oh, yeah. So was this the part <laughs> that you just mentioned about adding yes. the contract? Yes, yeah. contract. Yeah, let's just like talk to <laughs> So, I'll show you a little bit of uh, showing time. So if you want to edit, for example, yeah. your property, the owners are still living there and you want them to accept all showing time notifications instead of you, it just, because if you accept it, then you have to call them right. say it's okay, then you have to accept it, and then you just call it. So you can make it to where they can accept any uh, showings. And to do that, you just go to add edit. And matrix. Okay. And all of your listings are going to show up here. So if you click on the drop down, the listing will show up. I don't have any listings right now, but let's do edit existing. So once you add edit, click the drop down, you're going to see your listing and click on that listing and it'll take you to this page. And this is where you would update the, once you're under contract, you can update it from here. Um, they don't have this feature in mind, so you will have to do this separately. So if you go under contract, you go to add edit, and then you change it to active under contract, and then pending. You can also uh, enter your open houses information here. So it'll go out to all the realtor.com, Zillow, things like that. And then man if you need to manage the photos, that's here. And then manage showing time. That's going to take you to your showing time account. I have a question. Mm -hmm. So if you're hosting an open house for somebody, can you still go into that? They would have to do it because it's their listing. You can't edit other people's listing. I can just because I'm at it. <laughs> so that you can also add uh, contracts here if you prefer to do that. So when somebody uh, books a showing time appointment, if you have attachments here, they'll automatically get an email with a disclosure. So there's two ways you can add contracts. Appointment required. Um, if it's like a vacant property, you could do a courtesy call and go show, which means when they set the appointment, it automatically uh, accepts their appointment. But you have record of who uh, viewed the property. And then you can add your owner here. Add new first last name, put their mobile. And then it will show up, and then you can put uh, add their text. And then you can even remove yours, or you, you just want to know. You can keep that as well, and then you just save changes. So that it goes directly to Karen when somebody wants to mm -hmm. show it, mm -hmm. and then they can say yes or no. Right. Okay. Um, it's all kinds of restrictions, uh, required lead time. Uh, it's all 
maximum appointment leave. You can um, cut off certain days where they can't set appointments. Um, there's certain time frames, but this runs, I think, from 9 to 9, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So if you wanted to cut off certain times, you can do that through here as well. Questions? No. So Georgia MLS is not as user friendly, but you will have to go in uh, unless you use a closing company. You will have to go in and update the status of uh, Georgia MLS through Paragon. Let's see if I can get logged in. This is Jordan MLS. So to update your listings, you have to go. Mine shows up here, but if it doesn't, you have to go to Tools, Paragon. Why did you make it so hard? I don't know. I don't know why we have two, period. I think it's because it's old men still running it. <laughs> <laughs> like, they make it like a word problem. And then you should find your listings here, or you can enter the listing detail. So if you hit maintain listings and then you click on the address and then here you would update the active to under contract and then save. And then it'll ask you for a couple more information such as the co-op agent name, things like that, closing date. And then How about save. the listing stuff? Uh, the listing, I mean the, um, the um, um, queuing time. Georgia. I never do it. So you do have two separate accounts, one for Georgia MLS and one for FMLS. Most of the time, nobody's touching Georgia MLS, but sometimes they do. Um, so to be on the safe side, there, there it is, the showing time. Okay. Or you can call FMLS and they'll merge your two accounts to one. So you don't have two. Okay. What was that again? So since you have an FMLS showing time, you have a Georgia MLS yeah. showing time. It gets confusing because yeah. some will use Georgia, some use, most are going to use FMLS, but you can call FMLS or no sh showing time. You can call showing time and they'll merge those two accounts together so you don't have one. Okay. And you don't have to go in and edit those. Should we do that on the get go, do you think, or it's not necessary? Yeah. If you Just, merge the two, you don't have to give me information at once. Right. And once they're merged, they're merged not just for that transaction, but for all of them. Yeah. Ooh. And then make sure you download the show and time out on your phone. Any questions? No. But yeah. should we will to point and see? I would suggest your first listing come into the office. Yes. yes. So not listing. <laughs> You can come grab me if you get stuck. Well, and Monty will help. Um, yeah, Monty helps too. I think my question is this. Uh, when we were in Dora, the line, uh, when it had the FMLS and the Georgia MLS in it, it, said it had the same login information for Georgia MLS as FMLS, and I couldn't change it when it logged in. So if you click on the arrow on the top right, that's what it's like. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good one. Hey, Kimberly, are you still there?
Then you had to go, then you had to go all the way through again and update the Georgia Melissa. 